In June 1940, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill requested a small corps of troops to be formed for airborne warfare. The corps was not to exceed more than 5,000 soldiers and was purely for experimental purposes to test how capable airborne forces could be. A month later, in July 1940, parachute training began and it was here that it was realised the standard issue Mark II infantry helmet was inadequate for airborne operations due to its large outer rim. To correct this problem, the army gathered a vast quantity of rubber, which was then moulded into the so-called Flash Gordon helmet. It was named as such after its similarities to the movie headgear. This subsequently went through a series of changes that saw the side and rear guards replaced with two flaps, which they were ever used to secure the helmet to themselves. This variant was nicknamed the Sorbo helmet, which was the name of the manufacturer the rubber used. Alongside these designs, the RAF B-type flying helmets, which were made from leather, were utilised for training purposes. Furthermore, there is evidence indicating that these were also used in the early operations conducted by the British Airborne Forces in 1941. After a period of experimentation, and as Britain's Airborne Forces steadily grew in size, the first steel helmet was designed and issued from 1941. This helmet was designated the Steel Helmet P-Type, and consisted of a steel dome in which the wearer's head sat, with an exterior rubber rim that poked out at the rear. This design was to become the mainstay for the British Airborne for the next 40 years, and was even used for the helmets provided to tank crewmen and dispatch riders during the war. The P-Type first saw combat during Operation Bighton in France, followed later by extensive use by the 1st Airborne Division in Tunisia during the North African Campaign. Evidence further suggests that the P-Type was held onto by some paratroopers, and was used as late as 1944 during the Normandy landings with the 6th Airborne Division. However, the materials used for the liner and outer rubber rim proved too expensive, and a replacement was drawn up in mid-1942, known as the Steel Helmet Airborne Troops. The changes to the helmet included to the exterior, where the rubber rim was changed to fibre. On the inside, the liner also underwent changes, which saw cotton becoming the prime material used, except for the headband which remained leather. Only small quantities of this variant were issued to the troops, when it was recalled for further adjustments. In 1943, the steel helmet airborne troops Mark I was put into service. Everything was the exact same to its forebearer, except the exterior fibre rim was removed and replaced by a steel version. This variant of the helmet was issued just in time for the invasion of Sicily in July 1943, and it was the only helmet used by the British Airborne to see active service in all the major campaigns they were involved in. But it was realised that using a chin strap made entirely from leather was too costly for the war effort, and needed to be changed. The Steel Helmet Airborne Troops Mark II began to be issued from mid-1944 and saw its first combat with the 1st Airborne Division during Operation Market Garden in September of that year. The only changes carried out to the helmet was to the chin strap, which is now made from webbing, although it continued to have a leather line padding section for where the chin rested. In addition, the way the wearer fastened the strap was designed to be more efficient with the use of a small buckle intersected by a strap made from webbing. This stood in contrast to the two-ring attachment system used previously. This helmet was then utilised by the Parachute Regiment for the next 30 years, where it was deployed to the Suez Canal, Northern Ireland, Aden, and finally to the Falklands. Eventually, the steel helmet Mark II was becoming outdated due to the advancement in headgear available to soldiers, and a replacement was beginning to be produced. The M76 paratrooper helmet began replacing the steel helmet Mark II from 1979 and was used in combat for the first time during the Falklands War of 1982. Its official designation has often been a matter of confusion, with an array of names being associated with it. These include the M76 term, the parachute helmet, the lightweight parachute helmet and the Mark VI paratrooper helmet. For the case of simplicity, I'll be referring to it as the M76. Initially, the M76 was made of fiberglass and had a leather chin strap. However, both materials proved to be inadequate, with no ballistic protection being offered and the leather strap prone to erosion. Later, both these aspects were changed, 
with the chin strap being made from canvas materials, except for where the chin sat, which continued to be leather lined. Additionally, the shell was upgraded to Kevlar to provide ballistic protection to the wearer. Despite these upgrades, the soldier still found that the chin strap was awkward to use and fasten up with its D ring attachment system, and so replaced it themselves with a much more efficient button attachment that was found on the Mark VI infantry helmet. This change, however, was never officially carried out by the Ministry of Defence. Since it was introduced in the late 1970s, the M76 has been deployed across the globe in all the campaigns the Parachute Regiment has been engaged in. Nevertheless, in 2016 the time came for it to be replaced, with its successor being the new Virtus helmet, which has now become the universal helmet for the Army, especially for the infantry and airborne branches. Before we conclude this video on the British paratrooper helmets, there is an interesting point that needs to be raised, and that is the use of them, particularly in the campaigns post-1945. With the Airborne having their own officially made helmets, it would be thought that they would be used wherever their parachute regiment was deployed to. However, this was often not the case. For instance, in Northern Ireland and to a lesser extent in the Falklands, there was common sight to see a paratrooper wearing the Mark V infantry helmet. In Iraq and Afghanistan, both the Mark VI and Mark VII infantry helmets saw widespread use by the regiment, primarily due to them both having better ballistic protection than that of the M76. In other cases, helmets weren't used at all and were replaced by the distinctive marine berries worn by the regiment. For some campaigns, such as Northern Ireland, the Suez Canal, Kosovo, and in the early deployments to Afghanistan, this option was not by personal choice but rather military policy to win the hearts and minds of the local civilian population.